Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Luisa Oliette, and I'm curator of talks and events at the Photographer's Gallery. I'm delighted to be here to introduce the artist Gohar Dashi and curator Bali Mahalouji. This conversation coincides with a presentation of Gohar's work at the gallery. Entitled Across Sea and Land, the exhibition takes us into the past eight years of her practice through five bodies of work. Uniting these different series is an ongoing interest in the natural world. Cinematic and surreal, Gohar rebuilds the sea, sky, and land to lead us into a discussion about displacement and belonging. Here with us now, Gohar will take us through her practice and the experiences in her life and the visual histories that led her to create these images and what she hopes they might say to those who encounter her work. Joining Gohar is curator Vali Mahalouji. Vali has served as advisor to various collections and organizations, including the British Museum and Art Dubai Modern. And continues work internationally, collaborating with Tate Modern in London, Musée d'Art Modèle in Paris, and Asia Cultural Centre in Guangzhou. His forthcoming publication, A Utopian Stage, will be available in 2023. Thank you both for being with us. In terms of format, we'll begin with a presentation by Gohar before moving into a discussion with Bali. There'll be time at the end for questions and comments from you, which you're welcome to send through using the chat function here throughout, or if you would like to pose your questions directly, at the end, please use the hand function here and you'll be able to unmute yourself. We will be here for roughly one hour. Please note we are recording this. Thank you again for joining us and I hope you will continue to take a look at our event page to see what else is coming up. And now please welcome Gaur Dashti and Vali Malouji. Thank you everyone for coming today and a special thanks to Photographer Gallery gave me this chance to talk and share my idea behind my project. And also I'm, as, I'm so glad Vali is here and I love to listen his perspective through about my artwork. Today, very briefly talk about my practice and my concept behind the project that already on the wall in Photographer's Gallery. My artistic practice is centered on the lens-based work, photography and video. My subjects perform to the camera in chronographed composition. I use the camera to make my picture. I create my work through unreal image. I love to compose photographs and virtualize my imagination. My focus in on a range of social political issue pertaining to the complex relationship between personhood, citizenship, and space. Here I will talk about my project conceived between 2017 and 2022. I'm fascinated with human geographical narrative and in their interconnection to my personal experiences. I was born and grew up in Ahwaz, Iran in 1980 during the Iran Iraq War, my city, which was uh, epicenter of the war for eight years between 1980 to 1988. I had lots of conflicting life, life and death experiences in the midst of war. My project always began with an inquiry about these experiences. Home series 2017 is already in the wall and the photographer's gallery if you like to see the, this body of work. I believe the nature is what connect me to the multiple meaning of a space and conceptual abstraction and conquered reality to the concord or existence. People move out and the image show what happened when one's home is left behind. The photograph relieved the power of the nature to consume and conquer a home. Home series is not only a personal exploration about the nature, but is also about how nature can be political. What happened to the environment when human population are displaced or destroyed by war. When I talk about the war, because I grew up in a war time in my work, it's referred to, it's not just refer about my personal experiences, it's referred to the war and the world. People are transient while nature is constant. Nature will be here long after we all gone. And let me talk briefly about the reference of this body of work that most of them installation and sculpture. 
One of my favorite work from Walter De Maria, American artist, Air Room in 1968. Other body of work from Anna Glaccia, British artist. I saw this body of work for the first time in Museum of Contemporary Art Tehran in 2004 when I was a student. And also this drawing of Max Pinter and also the, you know, that the one contemporary artist make recently this big installation in a stadium in Vienna from the, interpreted from the that drawing. And if you like to know how I make the home series, I did the big research and, and I also talked to the two architecture helped me to find the right location abandoned building and houses in Iran. And after that, two gardeners really helped me to set, I rent the plan and I set, you know, everything in my photos and take a photos. If you like to know more about this body of work, you can see behind the scenes of home, Gohar Dashti home in Museum of Fine Art Boston or on also in YouTube. And also this one is at the uh, interview about the home series in Museum of Fine Art Boston. Lance, 2019. Um, one of our deepest needs is for a sense of identity and belonging, a common denominator in this human attachment to landscape and how we find identity in landscape and place. Landscape, therefore, is not simply what we see, but a way of seeing. We see it with our eyes, but interpret it with our mind and ascribe value to landscape for intangible and spiritual reasons. Landscape can therefore be seen as a cultural construct in which our sense of place and memory are in here. The idea from this project came from two experiences in my personal life. In one of my trip, now already I live in Boston in US. An immigrant friend asked me to take a postcard to her family in our country of origin, Iran. On front of the postcard was a photograph of the nature environment in her new home in US. On the back, she has written, I live here, a place similar to our home. And I did the research about the postcard with the natural picture when Iranian went outside of Iran and I did this amazing postcard in a Harvard uh, archive from uh, one person went to Germany and sent this postcard to his sister in Iran in a Qajar era and explain about the Rhine River, how is the Rhine and I'm good, I'm safe. And the river is like that. Furthermore, I remember a documentary, Jadulan, directed by Nadia Shahab. I met Nadia Shahab when I was in art residency in McDowell Colony in uh, 2017, in which the filmmaker visited her Iraqi mother living in Texas. During a drive through a Texas landscape, she reflected on the vastness of her mother longing for a sense of home. The landscape of West Texas was a mirror image of Iraq, and it was his other memory of land that she searched for. I am drawn to nature with this similar story. The idea of my land series grew out of fascinated with this human geographical narrative. This is paradoxical identity and belonging. Sometimes I see a tree similar to one we had in our yard in my hometown Ahwaz, Iran, but I feel a different connection with this new tree because the root are, is different as they grow up in another climate and soil. When I stand in the new lands and look at this new tree, which I had no memory associated with, I try to recall my old memory and revigorate it. The image in land are not created using simple montage technique. They are rather result of endless journey across the two continents and subsequent uh, transportation of this image into the alternate nature landscape by the sea, in the mountain, in the forest, where the composition of the picture acts as a lot between what is in uh, foreground and what is in the background. 
sometimes exposing, sometimes obscuring the way the picture was was uh, was constructed. I consider how the intimate relationship between the man, Kish, and nature can create new narrative related to the issue of global migration. How landscape would have human geographical narrative meaning. And if you like to know how I made this body of work, I took a photo for two years in United States landscape from east to west of United States. And after that, I went to Iran and printed great big huge uh, American landscape and install it in Iranian nature and take other photos. Uprooted, regardless of who we are or life are layer and richly texture with physical, figurative uprooting and migration. The idea of uprooting came from National History Museum at Harvard that has a 4,000 handmade glass model of hundreds of variety plants with lots of detail. And I spend a lot of time to see this plant. The idea of rooted is came from that. And I found this beautiful plant in the way of my trip when I working on a land series. And I took them and bring them to my studio and take a photo to show the root part that usually we don't see them and the way I took the photo is with lots of detail that everybody can look at like, like science photos. Disappearing nature is a new body of work and for the first time I present them in photographer's gallery. I made this beautiful landscape uh, prints with my Polaroid camera when I was in the residency for the second time in McDowell. And, and a beautiful nature. And as a photographer, you like to, you know, take a beautiful photos that. And after that, after I took lots of nature photos, I start to hit them and burn the Polaroid and to see how chemical reaction can make my photos, how heating could change from the nature. I burned the, you know, uh, uh, picture and also I burned the nature. And I wanted to see the result and everything with accident. I couldn't control what's the result gonna be and how we will see the nature in future. And I just want to back again, how is the tree? How we want to see the tree again? And this photos, sorry, just wanted to show you how is the shape of fluoride after the heating and after I burned them. Uh, and you know the photos on the wall is a scan of the Polaroid. Yes, thank you. I just, just want to stop share screening. Uh, I just want to check if. Valley is, okay? yeah, I just waiting for Valley. If Valley can come, we can start too. Yeah, thank you. I cannot hear you. I'm here. Yeah. You want, um, did you want to say anything more? Do you want to go into conversation, Gohar? We can start the conversation or if you like, you know, I, I love to hear your perspective through my artwork too. You can start to talk and after that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, hello to everybody. Uh, Gohar and I have had some conversations over the last weeks. And um, I don't know if you've seen the exhibition, but it's a very powerful exhibition in a very tight space, which actually I think really works quite well. And although she's showing various projects, there is a very easy sort of sitting between them as you go from one wall to another. Um, if you, you may have seen that the first image, uh, which is from a different series, I don't think you've talked about it here. Do, might you have the image of that, which is I, the, the tree being pulled? That's right, yeah. I, I haven't talked about that, but you know, we can talk if you like yeah. about that. Well, I think that's a, uh, first of all, is an, uh, 
very accomplished composition in itself. So if I describe the, the, the image um, for the audience, uh, from what I remember, there are two men pulling with ropes, a, a very large, uh, mature palm tree that is has collapsed and there are no roots or there's a very small uh, bundle of root perhaps at one end and they're dragging it across the barren landscape with a, a, a very large hill behind. That's right. Actually, if you want to know, as uh, it was a dead tree uh, in the Gaish Island, I just color it and clean it to look like life. So, but it's what totally dead. Maybe it's the main reason it doesn't have a, you know, good roots because it was a dead, um, you know, in, in, in the island. Yeah. So um, why did you paint the leaves green yeah. so that in your image, it looks like it's a tree that's just been cut. Yeah. And so there's a sort of savagery in the photograph. There are two men who are struggling, right? They're not doing it easily. So there's sort of like this kind of struggle going on between the men and the tree that's been dragged across, right? This dry landscape and the tree you've made to look as though it were alive. That's right. So, and uh, this one, especially this question, uh, I had a lot of trouble for that because some people are thinking I cut the live tree and, you know, for my photos, but how can I do that? Especially, uh, you know, palm tree for a Kashmir people. Is, is life. So, and now for a lot of climate change is dry and they, they cannot have a lot before. So, and it's, you know, it's good to bring this converse, you know, this question because it was totally dead and I just colored that. And because when I colored that for me, it was, you know, that's much more meaningful about the life. Tree has a mean, you know, for everybody, when you're just thinking about the tree, the first thing come to your mind is life. So I just wanted to show how these two men trying to bring the life to the other location. Maybe they cannot do that because it's so, it's heavy. It looks like they're trying, but I don't know what's gonna happen the next. So, and also when I was in Ahwaz, my dad, you know, plants the date palm tree in Oryar. And, and we love that it was in the garden. And after we went out after the war and 12 years ago, I went back to Ahwaz in the home that I was born. And I look at the, the palm tree is still there. So it just, the shape is changed, but it's still there. So I feel, wow, is it the power of the nature? We all gone, but it's just trying to stay. So, and I just, just trying to bring the life maybe to the other location, I don't know is what's gonna happen. It's, you know, I just, you know, bring the idea, but generally the reason I color it because I want it to have a much more meaning about the life. Okay, interesting that you talk about life being transported to another part of the island. And interesting to think about the first statements you made about um, conflicting experiences of life and death from home and childhood. And then you're talking about the palm tree in your home yeah. garden and planted by your father. Yeah. So, because can we also think that this part, this life, what you have now brought back to life with color or what you're telling, what you're um, feigning as a live tree uh, that's been dragged across the, the landscape is not in fact life being taken somewhere being transported somewhere else or could it also be that a life has just been put to an end because we we think as viewers that this is a live tree that's just been cut and has been aggressively dragged yeah rather than lovingly being taken somewhere it right. may also is that possible right so that we can also look like something right. aggressive has happened yeah exactly is it the one that doesn't have a root but it's green it's like very like between it's like a limbo moments. So yeah. you don't know what's gonna is it the real or is it not? Is it the one I love to play with the mind and make much more question? Yeah. And I'm doing with the medium I use, the camera, the making real, unreal. How can I trust, not trust? Yeah. You know, yeah. And and you said the whole thing was set up by you. Everything is set up. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you found the men, the rope. You 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 
choreographed an entire totally staging yeah. of this tree being dragged. Exactly. It's a location. It's like a movie, you know, Hollywood movie. As it descends, I find the location in Gresham Island because the nature in the Gresham Island is not specifically talk about Iranian landscape. It could be everywhere. Yeah. So, and, and I really like and has a history. It's a long time ago. It was the sea and the uh, Persian Gulf, but that area and now is an island. And also I, I choose the location and I had a model like an actor and actress and bring them to the location, set everything and take a photos. So it's a man and a woman. Okay. I made well, a mistake. Right. No, no, two men. That one is a two man. I'm talking about the other body of works as I see. Uh, yes. But that one, yes, two months. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so um I don't want to dwell on it too much, but it is still very interesting because uh, whenever we talk, there are quite a lot of layers that come out which are not necessarily obvious yeah. in the very beginning uh, because um, two people dragging a tree could also be that that's all that there is left for them to take with them. That they are, to, could it be that they are also dragging something that is the last thing that they have? Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? The last loved possession. So I, I think, that, can it be layered? Can And we can leave it at that. I, that was my own interpretation, is that I could read many that's things. Good. You know, is it the one I'm enjoying when I'm setting and make some unreal image? Because you also, as a photo, as a medium of photograph and picture, you can imagine your imagine. you know, you can bring your imagination, you know, to my words. And I love this playing. Even, uh, that's interesting, one of my, uh, you know, it was a show in Rome, I think one of the people, when I saw that that was your work, told me, oh, it looked like, you know, uh, my family photos, when I wanted to move to the other country, I took, put it in my suitcase, mm. you know, it was the last thing I put in my suitcase, mm. so, because it was, a, you know, every person has a different experiences, but I loved, you know, it, just trying to bring, but doesn't have a root. It's a still life. It's, they just want to try the last things, but is you know we don't know. It's as I said, it's a, like a limbo moment for everybody in that yeah. situation. Yeah. And that photograph leads um, onto your uh, exhibition, the main part of your exhibition, which does have to do with natural elements, landscape, and growing uh, uh, plants. So we go into this, uh, into these disused buildings mm -hmm. that you find yeah. uh, that have that life has drained away from, and you are reoccupying them by, in this case, by plants. Yeah. So there is a sense of, tell me, if, um, tell me what you'd like to um, emphasize here. Is there a sense of? uh life being brought back is there a sense of na i mean it's probably all of these things that a sense that nature takes over both in an aggressive way but perhaps also in a kind of sensual way that nature can take over and make make something meaningful and living again but it's mm -hmm. also quite aggressive the way nature can take over it so there's something um let's say that something that's soothing and wonderful about having nature grow back into something, but there's also something that means it it's determinately the end of something else. The building is now, uh, has been condemned yeah. and has been run over by something else. Yeah. So do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, sure. And I want to ask you about, I know uh, that those plants are all borrowed and hired, and then you make a very big, uh, sort of the trouble of returning them so there's a lot of backroom uh, you know staging and pre-production that happens at the same time and post-production because you take them back again and return them to their own place so there's a ritual also involved and I suppose this is also interesting whether everything is in, to some extent also ritualized the way when you talk about staging and choreographing and creating and crafting an image in front of the camera whether some of some of which we do not see, right? Like the painting of the leaves of the palm tree, right? So whether there is a kind of either a private ritual or or not necessarily a private ritual, but um how that ritual might come into the photograph, how the image may 
embody or may not want to embody the ritual behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, you said, you know, the plants occupy the place, but it's good to know at first government occupied the place because most of them belong to the government right now. You know, is it the abandoned houses in the center of, you know, city that the people left from, behind, you know, for some social political reason and now belong to the government. So they're confiscated properties. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's, I, even when I wanted to access, not all of them, but most of them, it, when I wanted to access, I need the permission, you know, to what I want to do and why I need that. And I, when I read the history, who was blind and who was the owner and what happened, I said, wow, all of them just left the country. And at the beginning of the project, when I, you know, two really good friends of mine, our architecture really helped me to find the right building. At the beginning, find me, you know, I found a very beautiful Iranian architecture. So very beautiful one, as you know, how is it? And I start to take photos. But when I hang them in my studio and I look at them, it was much more about the building and because it's beautiful. So not about my concept. After mm -hmm. that, I trying to find a building from the Qajar era and doesn't specifically show the Iranian homes, so they could be you know, everywhere, you have some sign, you can see that. And, and it's, you know, contemporary is from, you know, 40, 45 years ago. And so even in this case, you see there are abandoned and empty places in the center. And I wonder, and also parallel, I try to find the right house uh, garden or gardener to help me and rent these plants to bring them to the studio. I just, at first, I want to talk technically how I made it. So, and because some of them is, for example, the Christmas tree one is 300 Christmas tree. And what do I want to do with 300 Christmas tree? I just rent them and take your photos and return them back. For me, has it, has it, you know, root of people used to be was there? And also, is in a when, when you say the aggressive, that yes, it's a little bit aggressive way. It's just they want to fight to back there. And in some of them, even the scary in the stairs, some dead plants, even inside, they back, but we don't know how they want to back. Some of them has a flower and it's look like, you know, bring the spring. So it's again like other but your work playing with the real or unreal and bring the life inside, but not we cannot as an audience i mean people cannot enjoy and trust uh, the photos and i love this you know be between mm -hmm. uh, two meaning life and death as you know as i talk about conflict of my life between life and death and always you know have it in all of my words well there is also the uh, it does link to uh, what you show later, landscape. So we do have, I mean, it, it is, can we say a form of landscaping here? Yeah. You're, you're, you, you are uh, occupying the otherwise uh, derelict and vacated and unoccupied properties that have been confiscated. So they have layers of um, aggressive history embodied in them already and loss and they're being occupied otherwise by a natural landscape which is both living and also aggressive what i mean in the sense that it can take over hmm? yeah. uh, if we if we think about the if we think about um those who left the place do you want to say anything about um abandonment uh, you mean who left the place, or I didn't get the question. Abandonment or... is there is there anything that you because we ha you have spoken about home and yeah. not being at home, yeah. being, feelings of alienation, etc. But here, this is home inside of the home, right? So it's it's I presume it's in your city. Yeah, is in yeah. Avos, No, is it in uh, Avos? The photos. I mean, the location. No, it, the, 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 those are oh, no. not in Avos. No, yeah, but it's, but it's all in Iran. Yeah, most of them are in Mashhad. In Mashhad. So, because, you know, I have a much more connection to access to this kind of building uh, okay. that belongs to the government. So yeah. it's not easy to go in. 
mm. even for each of them, when I want to get the permission to just let me one day or even mm. half day, you can mm. set and take your photos. Mm. So, mm. and it, for me, it doesn't matter where I took them. It's much more about, you know, so the concept in Iran is happening everywhere in yeah. Iran. Yeah. So, but the idea I can, can as I said, it's from in from I was because I went is at lots of abandoned houses. This the trees are still there. They they, they cannot change the route and they are there, but we all move out. Mm. So it's like my family don't live anymore in Ahwaz. They moved to other country after the war. Uh, so yeah. So and, so Gohar, um, the abandon abandonment of these houses is uh, directly linked to political and social pressure. Exactly. Uh, all right. It's, one, yeah. it's not. It's, it's not one. about just passage of time, but it is about some kind of severance and some yes. some impossibility to continue. Exactly. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I'm I'm just picking at this point because you you don't in your in your captions you don't mention. I mean, you could, for example, let's say, do like some artists do without naming them, that you would actually put a a write-up next to the picture of when the building was built, who it, who occupied it, and who left it. So you would you would um, activate the, the the image by a lot of historical knowledge and by some kind of intentional uh, attention drawing to yeah. the issue of that how this house has ended up where it is. You know, let's say perhaps the people who owned it were executed or they disappeared. We don't know where they were. We don't know, right? So it remains on a much more fluid, uh, yeah. unattached level. Obviously, that is your intention, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but the only thing I didn't want, it was at the beginning, I really wanted to mention which location, which city, and the, what's the, even the family name, because I know most of them. Mm -hmm. So, but I feel much more about that, you know, when you refer to the one specific location and the people, you just refer about that kind of people. I just wanted to talk much more, you know, uh, open the conversation. It could be everywhere. It doesn't matter where they are. As mm -hmm. it's gonna happen right now in Yemen or Palestine or everywhere, you know. So mm -hmm. even right now it's again happening in Iran, but just bring the conversation to the, what's the meaning of the home? The people think about the home. So they have a smell for them. When you just, what's the home? You know, it has a smell and some people come to my mind. I just wanted to bring this idea. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the world is kind of had a connection with documentary photos. So, I mean, I learned from that. When, when I saw the home abandoned or destroyed building and, 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 Syria, especially that time when I was working in, in uh, home series. Uh, I always bring them in my mind, what's gonna happen for the people was there? We don't know, we just show the picture of the, you know, destroy houses, but what's the next? So mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring this kind of question, think more about the root of the people. It's not just, okay, who wanna open the arm? What's gonna happen? Yeah. Well, there is a, uh, a, a, a powerful, um energy between the dilapidated space, the architecture that's dry, but solid there, uh, fallen out of use, and the sensual plant that is occupying it. Yeah. I think, I think that, that's, um, that's very powerful. But he, we can already speak about the fact that lighting is very specifically organized here. Because I think even in this case, we can claim, if I'm not wrong, that there are almost no shadows, if possible. Yes. So the image is straight on, uh, three dimensionalities reduced as much as possible and light and shadow are eradicated or like, rather the binary is taken away so that you have one, one um, shade of lighting all the way across. Yeah. Can you tell us why that is really important to the practice? Because that is, you continue that as much as possible in all your series. It, yeah, even linking yeah. thread. That's right. Even if you buy from some of my works from ten years ago, no contrast. Everything is focused. We don't have autofocus, and you can see whole sense in a one moment. And I always play with that. You know, it's for you know. I just at the beginning, I really wanted to have. 
as much as close to the uh, history of Iranian painting to see everything the surface. Mm -hmm. So, but the camera itself doesn't have it. The camera, you know, just make it, you know, you just want to use the camera to see what is important for you, what is, is not, and has a focus and auto focus and play with the color. But I just wanted to have everything in a surface and each cover, like, a, you know, maybe it's not a big example, but it's like to see the miniature inside and outside at the same time as one cover they have. So I just wanted to play with the, as a, you know, I, I do photography, how can I use the camera and close mm -hmm. to this concept, everything with, you know, with, with no perspective, less perspective, because the camera have a perspective and less contrast and you can see everything with lots of detail. Yeah, it's, uh, so it, it is, it's important to note that um, you use the camera in this very particular way to, um, to take out uh, its natural qualities of being able to give you perspective. Mm -hmm. And because it is light being um, transferred onto emulsion originally, uh, to kind of not, you know, to kind of flatten that out as well, to flat the, the three dimensionality and to flat out the light and shadow. Uh, so that I think is really important to uh, to bear in mind when we look at your work and when we also see the landscapes is also the same. You you manage to do that as much as possible in the next series of the landscapes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So now there we also have oftentimes most of the times the screen is also flat, apart from a few times that you've put it. Uh, the plane of the screen is at an angle to the plane of the of the landscape. Uh, you intentionally have the plane flat again, so it's kind of a flat image of uh, from somewhere else, from another landscape within a different landscape. Yeah, um, I want you to just tell us uh, more again, more about that because I know that when when we spoke, you said when you've tried to and put it at an angle, you found yourself compelled to flatten it again. So there are some images that have perspective in them, but that your personal uh, passion was to kind of move back into a flattened flattened space. That's right. Uh, uh, it's interesting. When I was working on the last project uh, in the north of Iran, in the green part, one of the locals that helped me to bring the big wood plants and install it, you know, he just was very angry about what I'm doing. And he said, what are you doing? Is enough beautiful. Why you want to hang the other, you know, uh, green stuff and don't let, don't, you don't let the people to see the beautiful nature in North South Iran. And I feel, wow, that's interesting comment. I love that because it's exactly American landscape. It's like a barrier in everywhere and you cannot see that, you know, perspective of the Iranian landscape. So, and I love to play with that. Sometimes you see the panel and sometimes you don't see that it's totally flat, but you know, it's something like, it's not just nature under nature. I play with the panel too, to see the, you know, to see the age of the panel or you don't see that, you feel that, you don't feel that. It's always the panel and the perspective of the panel through the nature has something. So uh, is it one of the main things? And also I want, it, when it's totally flat, it looks like the mirror. So it looks like you see, um, even some people think it's a mirror. And, but I wanted to people to see the panel that is from the other places come here and I take your photos. Even, the mirror has a good meaning because it's a reflection of the other nature, you know, and to see the two nature next to each other. But for me, how this panel travel in some of the works like a sea or ocean one, you can see how much damage the panel have. It looks like a suitcase when you travel a lot, what happened for your suitcase. So, and I wanted to play with this damage and the age, to see, but on the other hand, you can see everything clear with, we don't have autofocus, everything is, you know, sharp and you can see everything with, you know, sometimes you, you don't know which one is important and which one you have to see playing again with the two kinds of nature. Is it the one I can say about the panel and how I compose the panel in the Iranian nature?
Ja, Matthias. Ja, Matthias. I know you always generously share your references when you do the projects. I'm wondering whether I could um, share my screen and bring some of the some of the material that you've shared with me. May I? Like, is it okay just to share the screen for a moment? Is that being shared now? Yes, it's shared. Yeah. So I think it's really, really informative. Um, if we went through these, I found them very interesting. And uh, I, I really like your thought pattern behind them. So here we've got Dan Graham. Do you want to tell us yourself, uh, Gohar, about um, your yeah. process? That's right. You know, I was in an art residency in Schopenhauer in Germany, and it was close to the, uh, you know, this body of work of Dan Graham. When I went there and I saw the mirror, it's a mirror. If you can see the next one, uh, really, it's much more closer. Yeah. So, and it's mirror, and I love to see the two, you know, connection between the two nature. It's not the true nature, it's the same nature, but you just came to your mind, what, which one is real, which one is not, and play with your mind. And it's one of the, one of, I can say it's one of my reference. I talked about that with Wally before, you know, the last week. And it's, yeah, it's one of the important body of work. And I really like Dan Graham works. Talking about screens in space, yeah, this body of work of Richard Serra also is how this big sculpture can like, you know, it's like a barrier. Don't let you to see the whole landscape. It's not the idea of Richard Serra. Right. <laughs> it was my perspective when I saw that, when I saw this huge, you know, iron installation, especially mm -hmm. the second one, it, you know, Oh, yeah, it's something. Oh, what is it? You don't want to see you, you know, them when you look at through the nature, or even when you look at through the landscape process. Mm -hmm. Maybe I interpret it as a photographer. How you, you know, how I can see this view, not just installation. Mm -hmm. But this is. Um, I was going to ask you this question. We haven't spoken about it before, but uh, that is, you know, there is something that reminds me of um, de Chirico or Magritte uh, or various surrealists um, who use landscape and barren landscape to put objects in uh, and to create incongruence. But landscape features quite a lot in my mind, at least in the eye in my mind, um, in that form of abstraction, uh, dreamscapes, uh, or free association scapes, that's this sort of thing. And, and also screens, screens um, come a lot into it. I was um, going to share with you, let me see if I can, uh, if I can find something to show you here. Um, yeah, these works, uh, it's called, what is it called this exhibition at Richard Saltoon? Uh, um, destructive years or something like this about 100 years of war and these these images of landscape and screens again there is something it's just this is in my mind uh, gohar uh objects in landscape uh living or not low long i mean organic things in in landscapes but also screens in landscapes and the of course this this image for me is is almost like a surrealistic image I'm sure though Nora Carrington would have had them. I'm I'm just throwing this out there because there was something in my mind that that occupied me when I was looking at at your screens and thinking about how what what is the screen, whatever image is on the screen, but the screen in a landscape to me evokes many other mem you know aesthetic memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to, yeah, throw that out there. Uh, you, this is an image that you've shared, which shows how the structure is made. 
Yeah, I just wanted to show, you know, how is the how size of the panel and how we carry it in different landscape in Iran. Mm. And it's the same panel that you take everywhere. So exactly. it gets, yeah. I just, you know, I just hang the new, um, new prints. Yeah. Is it the yeah. one I should even talk about? Uh, yeah, it's the natural, yeah. yes. Yes. And the stamps from your childhood. Yeah, exactly. The flower stamp and yeah. Nine. Yes. So I wanted to also just bring our attention to these kinds of drawings back in the Safavid period in Iran, at least, if not even going back to the earlier periods, the Timurid periods, but um the drawing of um of flora and fauna was already an, a preoccupation. It wasn't just a European preoccupation. And uh, this, for example, is attributed to, is a 17th century iris. And irises were very um, indigenous to Iran. This is a Mughal example of a botanical drawing, for example, an Indian Mughal one. This is a 19th century iris uh, book cover in lacquer, Iranian. And uh, here we have a European painting of an Iranian iris of the 19th century. So I think um, if we move on from that to uh, just the notion of landscape in Iranian painting, since uh, Gohar mentioned, since you mentioned the uh, Iranian miniature paintings and the flattening of perspective in Iranian miniature painting, and also uh, the flattening of color, because uh, we there's no brush stroke. And the background is always the same, exactly the same uh, tone. And, and the cl cloth, for example, is exactly the same tone. They will have black lines to determine outlines. But there was uh, basically putting light and shade was considered a, a kind of an imperfection, a kind of an impurity. So which is which is a concept that um, was very attractive to artists like Matisse, of course, who in his own words said how he he was inspired by Iranian miniature painting for those for those purposes of the flattening and also the um, taking out the shadows. But we also have always we have so many depictions of landscape. And since you mentioned landscape, I thought it would be interesting for the audience to also see uh, that how landscape features in uh, our visual culture. Uh, gardens especially, trees and flowers especially, and also on even on the clothing of the characters, you will see gardens. And of course, the pattern of most of our rugs and, and carpets, uh, whether folkloric or, you know, made of more sophisticated designs, there are also almost, almost always uh, patterns of landscape and gardens and often quite stylized. So I think this... Um, this was interesting, but what I want to just put this in there as sort of background, but going back to what you were discussing about your work is also, again, this notion of scale that you have taken out the, I want to try and find you, where are we? Let me get, let me unshare my screen. That in your case, you've taken the plants and you have, uh, you, have you have rid it from scale because we don't know how small or how big they are, right? So exactly. you've actually printed them small, but actually they're in, in in real they're a lot bigger than that. So they're smaller than life life size, exactly. rather than bigger than life size. That's totally right. Is it the one I just you know wanted to show it very, not very, but anyway, a small size like scientist photos. That even if you just look at them, you tell okay, is it the information about the one plant because it has lots of detail and information. But I just choose, the, I just found them. I think I, we talked about that before. I just found them in the, in the road to the Zagros mountain that, you know, they wanted to have a bigger road. And before they, you know, they destroyed it, I just found them and take a photos and bring, and to show the root part that we usually don't see that as kind of like people. We don't see the root of people. So, and bring them back as look like, you know, and they are just five. And you can see the five plants with lots of detail and their roots. Uh, uh, I 
Could you just tell but me? But you haven't got any shadows again. This is um... exactly that's right. Yeah, it's, it's it's exactly with no shadows, just the detail of the photos and the light. It's, it's no contrast, gray. Yeah, it, the drawings also never had shadows in yeah. themselves. The uh, the drawings that we're used to. What did you want to go back to? Sorry. Uh, actually, I just I don't know uh, how how. Uh, we have a time or not? I cannot find the time. Yes, I think it's uh, seven twenty-five. So, if a few minutes to speak about the Polaroids. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we have a couple of questions too, by the way. Just so yeah. you know. So the Polaroids uh, are a uh, are a um, divergence, a kind of a sharp move away from the control of light, control of shadow, control of perspective. And um, and also the choreography and the staging that's so so carefully meticulously done. Here, mm -hmm. there's an element of chance, right? And you've taken the photographs, but then you've allowed the chemicals to react to heat in and and produce something that is completely spontaneous and outside of your control. That's totally right. The the technique is totally different. With my previous work, like homeland, I have a control about the each sense. I draw what I want to do, see the location, set everything. But disappearing nature is like everything by accident. I couldn't, I don't know what the chemical reaction is gonna change my Polaroid, but I just let the you know chemical make my photos. So and as it was different way to look at the nature technically, but also, again, is much more like meaning of the nature and the tree, how we're going to see the tree on future and what's the shape of the beauty on future. So because each piece is beautiful photos, it's abstract, you know, but we just hit them, burn them, mm. destroy the photo, destroy the nature, but what we make it on future. It's very interesting because you you had to you you scan them and then you have a printed printed that image be, partly because if I correct me if I'm wrong because of the fragility of what is left of the Polaroid itself. Uh, both, that, that's true. Really, on the other hand, when I scan them, it's very flat, and I love flat. Oh, I see. Yeah, you flatten again. Otherwise, it would be quite crumpled. Yes, as you I can see. see in the picture, I because I, you know, I took the photos, I can show them with the taking a photo of them or even show the original one. But when I scanned them, it was totally flat and it's mm -hmm. like, ah, it's me, it's good. <laughs> we need to see some sculpture from you. <laughs> flat, flatten. <laughs> flatten, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, so uh, before, just before we open, I think Gohar, we, we've, you, you've, you've touched on alienation. You've touched on um, the question of uh familiarity of a landscape which is home the, and the unfamiliarity of a landscape that um wasn't home mm -hmm. and that nature isn't the same no matter where you are even though wh when you're putting the planes together you, that you are i think you are drawing attention to your own relationship to what you know as the nature that you were attached to and born into and in nature that you're now you're transporting with you either you're transporting yourself into from in a different geography and then you're bringing back into your own homeland and then contrasting them in this in this you know it's quite poetic but again perhaps I mean it's quite brutal the way the way or it's quite direct rather at least the way you contrast the landscape that you brought over and it doesn't really matter if it's fraying at the edges if it's if it's eroding with the water hitting it but you just have to do that and it's as if you have to confront yourself right between the what the landscape that you've adopted and the landscape that you you came from and reminding yourself of facing something which still remains as unresolved between the two and at the same time, uh, even though we're talking about plants, we're talking about extinction of plants, pos potentially, possibly, we, whether it's the tree being dragged or whether it's the plants that have been uprooted alongside the road that's being developed. And then you have 
photograph them and preserve them in the way we did, we do with, um, with this sort of scientific work on the one hand. But on the other hand, it is about seeing the roots that we don't see, as you said, the parts that we don't know, the parts that are hidden. And here they've been pulled out. Again, some, some form of severance, some, some aggressive force that has removed something from its habitat, right? And has, and the floatingness, the limbo. You, we, we talked about the houses being kind of in limbo. They used to belong to people. They used to be inhabited, then they were not. Then they were confiscated. And then they were, they were left abandoned with no, no new occupation, no new meaning uh, imbued into them. And then you come and put this other meaning in, into it, which is both, which is also poetic and sensual. It grows and it, it conquers, but, but there is again, a very harsh contrast between the two things because it, it isn't, it, it isn't occupying this, that space for, for, for the meanings that it was originally intended for. And then we move into um, the final burning which is, uh, which is, you know, allowing, I, I guess, allowing yourself to not control things and uh, let the landscape actually physically burn, rather the image of the landscape that has been either, either you know, it's feigning some kind of scientific relationship where we're, we're documenting the, 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 pl the plants, the weeds, uh, or we are documenting the landscape, etc. But here, um, you're documenting landscape and then letting it literally burn, um, which could link to all of those things, right? And not be flattened down into uh, the climate crisis, although that can be seen in all of it. But there is something possibly more, uh, I think, that is being said here by burning the image of the landscape that has been so meticulously uh, let's say, um, engaged with throughout the series that you've showed us. And finally, you've burnt it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. It's uh, really, you know, also when I hear from you how you talk about my work, uh, it's, it's, at first, it's my pleasure. And also, you find a connection between us, between all of the works. And it's the one all of that I'm trying to say from through the image. So. Mm -hmm. And the way you talk is exactly, you know, the way is it's a concept about the work that I just show it from the image. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Louise, I think we could order, open it to questions if you would like to. Um, sure. Um, yes. Help us with that. I had a couple of questions. I we have one here from Mary Pelche, who I think you might both know. Um, she says thank you, and that she's curious to learn a little bit more about how you began working um, in a conceptual way during your studies. And uh, what kind of conversations did you have with Bahman Jalali uh, while you were starting out in still photography? So this, I believe, is what was one of your professors. Yeah, and uh, and the show in MFA uh, two years ago was the show of uh, Bahman Jalali's work and my work. So, you know, the one of the good things from Bahman was always, the, it's good to know that Bahman Jalali doesn't like my work when I was a student. So <laughs> at the beginning, even I remember when I show my works to him, you know, what are you go doing, Go Are you just trying to think much more deeper about the concept? But one of the really good things I learned from Bahman was, don't ignore what happened around you. It's, it's important you think about the social issue. When you know, when you don't know what is around, you cannot work as an artist. And even if you want to work as an individual artist and conceptual artwork, it's much more important. It is important to know who you are and where do you live. Is it one of the important things I learned from Bachman? And even still, my works. But sometimes I said my works like a trophy. When I work and produce the one body of work, it's like, ah, oh, okay, I done this body of work that always in my mind. mind. It came from what I learned from Bahman. Bahman Jalali was a documentary, uh, you know, professor in university. But the things I learned from him, I I didn't do any documentary photographs in his class. But he didn't care. It was much more important for him to produce the work with a concept about social and political issues. 
Uh, thank you for that. Um, we have another question here. Um, it's from Janice, and she's interested to hear a little bit more about your connection to other Iranian artists, particularly um, female artists living in exile in the US or elsewhere. Is there something that you can say a little bit about the networks or the communities that you might be involved in? Yeah. Uh, one of the artists, you know, that I can say Iranian is Mitra Tabrizian. When he, she had a talk in Contemporary Art Museum, I was a student and I was really, you know, I didn't know I should study photography or filmmaking. When Mitra Tabrizian had a talk in the Contemporary Art Museum, I was, I think, 24, 25, and I got, wow, it's exactly what I want to do. As something, you know, Mitra Tabrizian doing a stage photography and set everything in her photos. And it was exactly maybe can change my perspective through the photography. And it was very interesting because I met, met uh, Mitra in my exhibition in London recently. She came to the show and it was so nice. And I talk about how her talk was important when I was a student in Tehran. Oh, that's interesting to hear. Um, is there much of a network or community generally? Uh, what did you ask? Is there much of a network? Is it, is it very formal or? Yeah. It's very formal, yeah. Um, I don't think we have any more questions from the audience, but um, I'm also aware of time and what you said earlier. Are there any final points, Gohar or Bali, that you would like to make before we before we wrap things up? Yeah, I can think of many questions. Yeah, but just <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue speaking with Go. I'll continue speaking with Gohar. So I'm, it's, very, it's very great that we've been put together uh, by a, a photographer's gallery. Thank you. Well, thank you both. Um, sorry, go ahead and say something. No, no, I didn't want to say. just want to say thank you. And it, it was great that I shared my idea. And thank you, Vali. And it was thank my you. honor to talk and, you know, talk to you about my work. Thank you. Well, thank you both so much. Um, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, I hope you'll have a look on our website to see what else is forthcoming. And if you are in London, there is still opportunity to see Gohar's show, which closes this Sunday, I believe. So do you have a um, do take a look if you can. And otherwise, we will see you again soon. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.